Hello and welcome to Health Watch. I'm Dr. Ben Xiaomi on behalf of the physicians and staff at Everett Community Hospital. I'd like to welcome you to this segment. Today we're going to be talking about medical acupuncture. And we'll be right back after this message. The evolution of just treating a heart attack has been tremendous, but we see that in everything and all the subspecialties of cardiology. Effort Hospital is right online with that equipment and is very good at staying up with the technology and all the, the new modalities and treatment options. I don't think there's any other place that I would feel I had to go to get better care. It's a nice feeling to take care of patients that way. And welcome back to Health Watch. Today we're going to be talking about medical acupuncture. As our guest, we have Dr. Tony Tomtot, a physiatrist working with Lancaster Neuroscience. Welcome to our show. Thank you for having me. Uh, Tony, we've done this show before, and I, I'm always uh, interested in the, with the role of acupuncture as it relates to uh, what we're doing in medicine across the board, but particularly in your field of physiatry. I think for the, for the audience, you might describe what a physiatrist is. You are a physician, and uh, what is your background training? Sure. Um, Let's talk about physiatrists. And a lot of patients, <clears throat> when they come to see us, they they confuse. They they think I'm a psychiatrist. I'm a physical therapist. They don't know how to call us. And I said, you know, here on the East Coast or West Coast, we're called physiatrists. But in the Midwest, sometimes the people pronounce physiatrists. Uh, what our field is, we study muscle, nerve, and we treat pain management. And these are the, the my uh, special. Uh, specialty uh, when I get trained at Stanford. Um, we did uh, three years of medicine and then after that uh, three years of physical medicine rehab and we study all spinal cord injury, we study uh, patient with uh, stroke, after stroke we try to get them rehab to get them back to functional activity and on top of that we do a lot of pain management, acupuncture, uh, steroid injection uh, to help the patient to get rid of the pain so they can function. Right. The unique role that you have and the training you have is in acupuncture. We're going to be certainly covering that, but it, 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 I'm, in, I'm interested in, you know, your, your workup is the traditional workup you do for everyone that has chronic pain or, or problems like you described with the physical problems, stroke, secondary stroke and the like. So tell me a little bit about how your, your, your approach to your patient that comes to you particularly you know, with chronic pain. Most of them have had workups already. Right. Uh, they'll come in with their MRI, and yeah. CAT scan, uh, their, their previous therapies. Um, when they time they're seeing you, unfortunately that's the way you see patients, um, they've, they've gone through a gamut with their family doctor, potentially a neurosurgeon or whoever else. Um, you see them, how, what is your approach? Yeah, it's usually that's my approach is when the patient come up to us, the number one, we have to listen to them again make sure we got uh, all the correct history and based on the listening to the patient you you know exam carefully with the way we approach it to listen and uh, evaluate from the spine and look for the joint and review all the x-ray and MRI imaging study and then we can come up with some um, correct diagnosis to help them to treat and based on the, the diagnosis we can just you know uh, give a good plan for treatment, including exercise, therapy, uh, medication, injection, acupuncture, or neuro—I mean, or surgical approach. Um, so, for example, if Mr. Uh, John Smith come up to see us for neck pain, we have to understand the etiology of the pain. Where's the pain come from? Is it from the arthritis, from the muscle, the joint, or the nerve? And then, based on, on different category of the pain, and we can see that you know different approach to help the patient uh, and then we can get a good treatment plan um, uh, if we need any further investigation to make a correct diagnosis to, to know more the symptom and the disease so in order to treat the patient uh, correctly we can do that right so all the modern techniques and evaluation techniques of physiatrists like yourself would go through and, and exactly work up and like we can after the patient have MRI what it is x-ray and MRI to to help you to look for the bone structure and to see if the patient have disc herniation any um, cancer mass or facet joint disease uh, or any disc herniation and then also you need to get for the testing called electrodiagnostic medicine, the study for the nerve. That's what you study for uh, physiology of the nerve to see if any nerve was pinched permanently or the patient, even though they have some other condition called diabetic neuropathy, you can have numbness and tingling in the hand, the feet, and sometimes it can be confused as the nerve uh, irritation from your spine, but actually well, after we do the further investigation, EMG and nerve test, we can find out this is not directly from the spine, but it's coming from diabetic neuropathy. Or even though the patient have 
um, vitamin B deficiency or chronic anemia or thyroid condition, all that can interfere with the nervous system. And then when we know exactly the cause, we can treat them properly and the patient will get better. Yeah, I think that's the key is making sure you know what you're treating at the time. And But having gone all through that, so much of what you end up seeing is in, in our modern society has is chronic pain that's not identifiable necessarily and what we're going to talk about today is some of the techniques that you use um, sure. and particularly get into um, uh, uniqueness of acupuncture as it relates to that so let's just talk about you know you you do steroid injections and epidurals and all those kind of things that others have done uh, what how how do you find that in the role of, of, of as a physiatrist as a physiatrist uh, well a lot of the different physiatrists do epidural injection they do more invasive pr procedure or radio frequency ablation epidural injection, facet, SI joint, and acupuncture, trigger point, and Botox injection. These are variety of different options we can try and based on different conditions and we can treat them properly. For myself, I work directly with a neurosurgeon and uh, we see a lot of patients with spine, with back pain, neck pain, uh, leg pain, and arm pain, either before surgery or after surgery. And uh, I have to make a good um, evaluation to make sure what are we dealing. Is it from the, the disc? Is it from the nerve or muscle? And these are the three main things we're looking for when we evaluate the patient. And based on that, and we can uh, give them a good treatment. Uh, sometimes, I, you know, patient already went through different epidural injection, facet injection, medication chronically, and they come to see me. They still have pain. They still cannot walk a block or sit, stand, or they, you know, like older uh, patient, they cannot play with their children. They cannot lift their grandson or granddaughter because there's so much pain in the neck and the low back. So what I try to do is I have to look at the patient, make sure that uh, something I can help them. Lifestyle modification, that's the number one. We need to get the weight off so we don't have to carry an extra weight and put pressure on your spine. Number two, if you smoke, we ask them to stop smoking. Nutrition, exercise, stress modification, all that will help. Uh, that's the patient's job, and then they can do that. We can coach them to, to help them to, re to get rid of all the uh, lifestyle modification. And then on top of that, we can do some acupuncture, trigger point injection. These are non-invasive because they've already been through so many invasive procedures mm -hmm. and they have a lot of side effect uh, medication. They can't tolerate uh, all different uh, procedure or medication. So they're looking for an alternative treatment. That's what I play the role in you know, evaluate for acupuncture. Particularly for acupuncture? Yes. You, you, you and I talked before, we talked about even, even the use of Botox. And we, we're used to you see hearing about Botox as a kind of a, a you know, a cosmetic uh, issue, particularly with facial issues and all, but you can actually use that therapeutically. I was very interested in hearing that. I would assume that's more for people with muscle spasms. Yeah, kind of like. exactly. It's like before we do the Botox, uh, we, we usually evaluate the patient with, is it a muscle spasm or something chronic condition we can help? And we do a trigger point injection. With trigger point injection, we usually inject with xylocaine. And with xylocaine, it's helped to relieve the inflammation, relieve the pain, but the problem is a short-term effect. And the patient come back to see me, yeah, it's getting better, but within a month or two months, and they have a reoccurring. And that's the next step I offer for Botox. You know what it is, Botox? Yeah, it's, a, it's actually a, a, a toxin. Poison. Yeah, yeah, a poison. Uh, if you digest, if the kid digests the, uh, the, the, to the toxin, too much toxin in the food, you can die from that because it's paralyzed your muscle. Yeah. What it is, we use to extract a small amount of protein of the toxin. We inject into the muscle. What we do, we cut down the interaction between the muscle fiber A and fiber B so there's no communication between the two fibers, so there's no muscle contraction. That's how we help to relieve the muscle contraction to help to relieve some spasm. Right. In the neck, especially with the whiplash, patient with, after the accident, they have muscle spasm oh, in the neck. Terrible one. Yeah. yeah, so they can't move the neck, and that's what we try to help them by doing the Botox. Makes sense. We've got to take a break. We're going to come back and talk uh, particularly about acupuncture and its role today. We'll be right back after this message.